Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is January 21st, 2022. And could cannabidiol, CBD, component from cannabis, actually help the body to not get infected by COVID-19? That's what some studies seem to be suggesting. We're going to take a look at an article in this video about that. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can find a link to Patreon in the video description. So here we have an article from Vice dated January 20, 2022 by Audrey Carlton. The headline is Oral CBD Prevented COVID-19 Infection in Real-World Patients, study suggests. While not a substitute for vaccines, quote, CBD has the potential to prevent infections such as breakthrough infections, the study's lead author said. So commenting, this is really interesting. I had seen studies in vitro, that is in like a, you know, not in an organism, but like in a Petri dish or something where it looked like CBD prevented some cells from being infected by the COVID-19 virus because the virus has to um, bind to certain receptor sites and if it can't bind to those receptor sites, then it can't infect the cell. I'm not sure if that is how this is working or what, we're going to find out in the article. So let's turn to that now. Cannabidiol, the non-psychoactive cannabis compound, better known as CBD, is a potent blocker of SARS coronavirus 2, that's COVID-19, replication in human cells, new research shows. Not only that, but a survey of real-world patients taking prescribed CBD found a, quote, significant negative relationship between CBD consumption and COVID-19 infection. I just want to comment there real quick. So they say non-psychoactive cannabis compound. Um, I've had CBD, and I wouldn't say it's entirely non-psychoactive. They say that to distinguish it from THC, which is pretty strongly mind-altering. I find, though, I've tried different CBD products, and some of them, I mean, they ra can range from making you sleepy to honestly just feeling a little bit stoned. Now, I don't know if that's because of other compounds that were present in the particular extracts that I had or whatever, but um, anyway, just throw that out there. For people who haven't had CBD, um, know that when you take it, I mean, you might feel a little bit different, actually. Anyway, continuing. As detailed in a paper published Thursday in the peer-reviewed journal Science Advances by a team of 33 researchers at the University of Chicago and University of Louisville, a survey of 1,212 U.S. patients taking prescribed CBD found that people taking 100 milligrams per milliliter oral doses of CBD returned positive COVID-19 tests at much lower rates than control groups with similar medical backgrounds, in other words, they have comorbidities, pre-existing conditions, who did not take CBD. According to the study, all of the patients were people who had seizure-related conditions, which CBD is often prescribed to treat. Of this group, 6.2% returned positive COVID-19 tests or a diagnosis, compared to 8.9% in the control group. Among a smaller subset of patients who are likely taking CBD on the dates of their first COVID-19 test, the effect was even more pronounced. Only 4.9% of people taking CBD became infected with COVID-19, compared to 9% in the control group. Quote, our results suggest that CBD and its metabolite, 7-hydroxycannabidiol, can block SARS coronavirus 2 infection at early and even later stages of infection, the study states. Besides looking at real-world data, the scientists conducted lab tests. Lead author Dr. Marsha Rosner, a professor in the Ben May Department for Cancer Research at the University of Chicago, and her team treated human lung cells for two hours with CBD, before infecting them with SARS coronavirus 2, and left them for 48 hours while monitoring them for the presence of the COVID spike protein. They found that CBD inhibits the replication of genes required for the growth and spread of the virus throughout the body. So commenting, okay, it sounds like less of a blocking the uh, receptor sites as I had maybe thought, and it seems like it's more suppressing the replication of the virus. All right. They performed the same tests on three COVID-19 variants and found the same result. Quote, as a bottom line, what this says is that CBD has the potential to prevent infections, such as breakthrough infections, 
which might be one of the most useful applications, Rosner told Motherboard. The researchers strove to identify the mechanism through which CBD inhibited infection. While they found a negligible effect at the point at which viruses enter cells, that's what I was saying, they found CBD to be, quote, very effective at preventing protein expression in cells two and six hours after infection, and, quote, partially effective at doing so 15 hours after infection. They also found that CBD's metabolite, 7-hydroxycannabidiol, the compound created in the body when CBD is processed in the liver and intestines, has similar antiviral effects and was non-toxic to cells. So commenting that being non-toxic to cells thing is really important because you can have, uh, you know, medicines of various kinds that can affect bodily function in ways which, you know, suppress or stop a particular disease, but they can also have, you know, toxic effects on the body beyond that. This seems to be non-toxic, so that's excellent. The study offers strong evidence that CBD can treat and slow the transmission of COVID-19. It comes just one week after an initial revelation out of Oregon State University and Oregon Health and Sciences University that cannabis precursors, the acids that, when combusted, turn into CBD and THC, can halt the infection of cells by sars cov 2 in lab tests. The authors of that study were careful to note that cannabis-derived products while a potentially important public health intervention, are no substitute for vaccination campaigns. However, in the all-out fight to end the pandemic, they could end up becoming a much-needed supplement. Quote, Despite recent vaccine availability, sars cov 2 is still spreading rapidly, highlighting the need for alternative treatments, especially for populations with limited inclination or access to vaccines, the University of Chicago researchers write in their study. Quote, what we don't want is people just running out and thinking, I can take CBD and then I don't have to get vaccinated or I don't have to be masked, Rosner said. This is what we really don't want to see. It seems like there's a flood of scientific news about the promise of cannabis in preventing or treating COVID-19. Last week, a different group of researchers at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada, identified CBD as a primer to a process called apoptosis or natural cell death. In the case of COVID-19, their research suggests that CBD spurs on the death of infected cells, stopping viral spread in its tracks and slowing the transmission to others. So commenting there, apoptosis is natural cell death, and you do want an infected cell to die before it can just keep being a factory of the virus. Also, like in the case of cancer, you want cancer cells to die and not keep replicating. So this can be an important part uh, stimulating apoptosis of an immune response. So, The studies, in tandem, contribute to a growing body of research identifying cannabis as a tool in the COVID-19 response arsenal. Rosner and her team first laid the ground for this work in March of 2021, when they identified cannabidiol as a potential treatment for COVID-19 for its ability to hamper viral replication in lung cells in a lab. As detailed in a preprint, the team found that in quantities similar to those that are prescribed as treatment for epilepsy, CBD inhibits the replication of genes that are required for viruses to spread throughout the body. So a quick comment there, a preprint is a journal article that has not been printed yet. It's been written, but it maybe hasn't gone through the full peer review process, etc. I think that uh, I was actually just looking at that particular article, and it's not been peer-reviewed yet for like nine or ten months. Uh, hopefully that gets review soon and gets published anyway. Rosner and her team caution against conflating their findings with the suggestion to use recreational cannabis as a treatment for COVID-19. THC may inhibit CBD's antiviral effects, the authors note, and smoking is bad for your lungs. Without clinical trials, they also can't recommend that people go out and buy CBD at a dispensary. So commenting there, um, they don't actually mention THC in the rest of the article. So I don't know if they have any specific reason for saying that, you know, they suspect that THC does in fact inhibit this effect, or if they're just saying it may. But I mean, in that case, you know, I don't know, any number of things may inhibit the effect, I guess. Um, so I guess we'll have to see with that in lieu of like 
some you know uh, investigatable, falsifiable reason why THC you know may or may not uh, inhibit this effect. So anyway, continuing quote. We strongly caution against the temptation to take CBD in presently available formulations, including edibles, inhalants, or topicals, as a preventative or treatment therapy at this time, the authors write, especially without the knowledge of a rigorous, randomized clinical trial with this natural product, unquote. Rosner notes that it's impossible to know what CBD dosage and formula will be most effective at treating COVID-19 infection, until her research moves into clinical trials on humans. After all, Rosner said, quote, we can only do so much in mice. We really need to do this in people. Quote, we think that it has a potential both to be a preventative. So for instance, you can imagine that I'm going traveling and CBD is something that if we can make the right product accessible, should be widely available, should be something people could anticipate needing, she said. Quote, or you go and get tested and immediately start taking it. The hope is that it would prevent more serious disease, but we don't know yet, and we would need a clinical trial, unquote. And that's the end of the article. So, what can we take away from this? Obviously, the researchers are being very cautious and, you know, trying to not have their statements being misinterpreted. That's, of course, appreciated. On the other hand, uh, you know, is it time to change more laws to make this kind of research easier to do? I mean, this kind of research is maybe easier to do on cannabis products now that more states, I mean, at the federal level in the United States, it's still pretty tightly controlled, but more and more states are paving the way to have cannabis be used much more openly and therefore studied and researched more openly. Because if you don't need special permission to, you know, use it for study and research, then you can do study and research more easily. Second, um, I did skim through the article that they linked about the epilepsy patients who were taking some amount of CBD and was like, well, you know, if they're getting those effects, at least that sample of 1,200 people, um, you know, maybe we can learn something about what the effective doses might be. And th from what I saw in the article, there may have been a table somewhere I skipped over, but the statement I saw was like, up to 1,500 milligrams of, now I forget, whatever the pharmaceutical name for CBD, it's like epidiol or something like that, um, something like epilepsy and cannabidiol mashed together. Um, it said up to 1,500 milligrams. Now, that's an enormous amount of CBD. Uh, I don't know how many, you know, what percentage of the patients that they tested were at 1,000 or 1,500 milligrams. I mean, a lot of doses on CBD over-the-counter products are like 50, 30, 10 milligrams, at least for like individual doses. Now, I did do a little extra research and I was looking at, you know, some like epilepsy forums and things. And people are talking about for an adult dose, something like 100 to 300 milligrams a day is what a lot of people take. Now, CBD is fat soluble and a number of factors are going to affect how much you're able to use. Like for example, if you take it with a high fat meal, you're probably going to absorb more of it and your body's going to use more of it. So, you know, that's a factor just even in how much you take versus how much actually gets into your system. But anyway, it's very interesting research. I will keep an eye out for more studies of this type. Um, as the researchers said in the article, you know, obviously people should not run out and start thinking that, oh, I will take a CBD supplement of a dose that, you know, may be underneath the effective threshold. We don't know because they haven't found what the effective threshold is at this point. At least these researchers haven't. That's why more trials are needed. Um, but, you know, if it's something that you already take, it may be, you know, a little bit extra edge, you know, keep wearing your mask, keep distancing everything else. But I don't know, it may be helpful. So that's fairly promising. I hope that we know conclusively one way or the other very soon. But you know, it's some ray of hope, I think that there is a non toxic natural substance that may actually, you know, cut down uh, people's odds of once the infection takes hold of it actually taking off. I was uh, reading through the study, like I said, 
And it says that uh, it's believed to work at a very early stage after the cells have been infected. So it doesn't block the cells from being infected, uh, but it does seem to, um, you know, keep the replication from taking off. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. What do you think? Leave a question or comment below, and we'll continue the discussion in the comments section. Otherwise, thanks for listening. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Back in the real world, join an organization or at least make a donation to one if you're not ready to join yet because all the education in the world isn't going to help us if we don't get organized. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you in the next video.